Hey everybody, you're watching a physio named Jonah. That's this guy. Today's video is the conclusion in my scapular saga of sorts. This is the return of the king section of this scapula series, if you will, with the fellowship and two tower sections being linked right over here. First, we discussed how the shoulder blade moves, then we went into the muscles that make those movements happen, and today is exercise examples for those muscles and movements of the scapula. Hopefully this will tie it all together with a beautiful little bow that is in no way months and months behind schedule. I don't even know why you would say that or, or bring that up like at all. In this video, I'll be going through exercises that target the movements of the scapula in the same order that we talked about in the previous two videos. Scapular elevation, depression, retraction, protraction, upward rotation, and downward rotation. If you're new around here and enjoy the video, consider hitting the subscribe button down below and leaving a like on the video also helps this video reach more interested viewers just like you. But enough about that. Let's get started with today's video. Yeah, this isn't exactly going to blow any minds out there. Scapular elevation is essentially the movement of shrugging the shoulders upwards and bringing the scapula up towards the head. So of course an exercise that would target this movement and the muscles of the upper fibers of trapezius would be the shrug. A shrug is a very simple to understand and perform exercise that focuses on activating the upper fibers of trapezius as we lift the shoulders up while our arms remain by our sides. This is a pretty visually simple one to understand how the exercise targets the upper fibers of trapezius because it is really just doing the scapular movement in isolation. Not all of these exercises are going to be quite as clean and easy to understand as that one, but I promise I will do my best. This brings us to our next exercise. Scapular depression is a little bit of a harder movement to isolate, and to be fair, not the most common to train, but I do think there's an exercise that shows this movement fairly well. It just so happens, however, to incorporate the arms, and we're going to take a look at the tricep dip. The tricep dip, as the name suggests, does also target the triceps in the arm as the elbow extends or straightens to push the body up against gravity. It also, though, includes the scapula pushing downward simultaneously, training our movement of scapular depression. If you recall from last video, this means that the latissimus dorsi and lower fibers of trapezius are also going to be active here, helping the scapula move downwards while the triceps work on straightening out the elbow to push the body upwards against gravity. Full disclosure, scapular retraction is probably my favorite of the scapular movements that target with exercise because I think it's the most clinically important to target and I just enjoy training it. Now I get it that having a exercise for the scapula that's my favorite maybe makes me seem a little bit too cool, so just to kind of level it out and bring me back down to earth, I do want to share my Nidoking holographic Pokemon card that I still have from when I was a kid, so just in case you thought I was getting like too big for my britches here and like a little bit too cool, hopefully this helps just make me feel a bit more human to you. Just just have a little bit more of a, a level playing and field as we discuss. The reason scapular retraction is my favorite is that in my opinion it is one of the most important and impactful movements to train given how much of our life we spend hanging out in scapular protraction, especially while we sit and work on important things in front of us. I'm going to do two exercises for this one because it's my favorite and it's my YouTube channel, okay? I make the rules around here. I wrote this video. I didn't put this in the script and I shouldn't go off script because it doesn't go well. First up is the row. This is an exercise that gets done a lot and not always with the best technique, which can really minimize the targeted benefits of this exercise. With a row exercise, the focus is bending the elbows to the side while squeezing the shoulder blades together. As you'll notice, the scapula move from a protracted position at the start to a retracted position at the end. This is the main focus of this movement and should be emphasized regardless of which variety of this exercise is being performed. The rhomboids and middle fibers of trapezius should be really active in the row, as they are the muscles that pull the shoulder blades back towards one another. The biceps will also be involved in the arm though, since the elbow is bending or flexing during the movement. Another exercise option for retraction is the reverse fly. 
Similar concept where the main goal of the movement is to retract the scapula against resistance, however this time the arms stay mostly straight or with a soft bend all throughout. At the end of the motion, you can see how the rhomboids and middle fibers of trapezius that we talked about last time should be actively working to pull the shoulder blades back towards the center of the back. What's nice about the reverse fly in comparison to the row in terms of isolation is that the arms don't bend, which means that the biceps aren't involved. Oftentimes with a row, I find we can rely too much on our biceps if we struggle with strength in our scapular muscles, so the reverse fly can help take away the ability of our body to compensate. You may recall from last video that the main muscles of scapular protraction are the pecs and the serratus. So since we're talking about the muscles of the chest and the serratus which pulls the shoulder blades forward, an exercise that targets this motion of the scapula is going to involve pushing towards the front. The push-up plus is an example of this. A push-up on its own will already incorporate scapular protraction as the shoulder blades move away from the spine and the body pushes away from the ground but the plus added on to the end targets the serratus and the scapular protraction movement even more. The plus involves pushing the chest further away from the ground while maintaining the straight position of the elbows. This causes the scapula to further protract away from the center of the back as the serratus and pecs pull the shoulder blades forward. Cat cow is another exercise that utilizes this sort of motion, although it really focuses on the protraction movement by maintaining the arms straight throughout the entire motion. This exercise doesn't do as much to train the strength of the muscles involved, given the short range of motion with minimal resistance applied since the knees are down in four point, but it does do a really good job of focusing on the feeling of doing scapular protraction and retraction. If feeling these movements and understanding where your shoulder blades are in space is something you're struggling with, this is a great exercise. Scapular upward rotation is another difficult one to isolate given the widespread of muscles that contribute to the performance of this movement. This involves the upper fibers of trapezius, lower fibers of trapezius, and serratus anterior all working together in order to perform the motion of scapular upward rotation. So an exercise that focuses on this is going to be doing a few different things. A physio exercise that seeks to target this motion and coordination of these muscles is the angled shrug. Setting the arms at an angle out for the side of the body, the shoulders are lifted towards the ears without moving the hands further away from or towards the body. This can help to create a sensation of scapular upper rotation, but to be honest, it isn't really the most practical or functional exercise to use for most people. The benefit of this exercise is that it keeps the movement really focused onto just the upward rotation itself, getting the upper and lower traps with serratus some good reps of working together without much else happening in the body. An exercise that I would prefer functionally and for most people is the overhead press. Done with good technique and movement, this motion will involve the scapula upwardly rotating and creating a powerful platform for the deltoid and other muscles of the shoulder to use in lifting the weight up and towards the ceiling. Again, as this motion involves more muscles active around the shoulder than our previous one, it isn't as focused onto just the scapular upward rotation itself, but overall this is an exercise that I believe is more useful in most training programs. If we're going to work our scapula into a downwardly rotated position against resistance, well, we first have to put them into an upwardly rotated position to start with. A good example of this is the cable pull down exercise or the lat pull down. The exercise starts with the shoulders in an upwardly rotated position because our arms are over our head holding onto the bar. Then, as we pull our elbows to our sides and our hands down towards our chest, the scapula will downwardly rotate back to their neutral position. There is a bit of scapular depression that happens here as well, but the more notable component of the exercise is the downward rotation of the scapula because of how upwardly rotated they are to start with. Recall from last video that the downward rotation muscles are the levator scapulae, rhomboids, and pec minor. As these are smaller muscles, they'll be coordinating the rotational component, but the latissimus dorsi or lats contribute a lot of the power in this movement. 
hence the name Lat Pull Down. And with that, we come to the end of today's video, as well as this three-part saga on scapular movements. I apologize to those of you who've been following along with this series from the start. It definitely took a lot longer to put together than I expected. I said it a few times, I'm trying to get more consistent on this channel, and this fall going into the winter is a time when I'm going to be trying to do that again. Nicole and I feel like we're starting to hit our stride with this whole parenting thing, which means there should be more time for me to make videos like this and post them on here, so I hope you guys are looking forward to that. Thank you to you for sticking around. Thank you to my amazing wife for giving me the time to work on these videos. I'm looking forward to hopefully having a few more coming out for you guys very soon. There did seem to be a good amount of interest in this series on the movements, exercises, muscles, so I'm going to do a similar series for the hip coming up next. Now, let me know in the comments section below if there's anything you want to see as a part of that series and what your guess is or place your bets on how long it's going to take me to finish that series. Right now, FanDuel has the over under set at five and a half months, which is uh, harsh but fair. But most importantly, guys, as always, move your body, have a laugh today, and I will see you at the next video. Thanks for sticking with me.